So now it's time that we understand how we can automate list like controls with Espresso. So using Espresso, we can perform a scroll type of action on a list. We need this because in most modern Android applications, you will have the same component being repeated in a list and we would want to, let's say, scroll in that list to perform action on a specific element. In case of Android, we generally have two types of list. One is called as a recycler viewer, wherein we have a small number of child elements that are created and then the same elements are recycled as you scroll. For these type of use cases, we can use the on view control with recycler view actions. We also have another type of list called as an adapter viewer, wherein the data in the list is backed by an adapter. And in such cases, we don't use on view. Instead, we use on data with a custom matcher based on how the adapter itself is representing the data. For these type of methods, scroll to does not work since the view is created dynamically and it needs an existing view. Don't worry, we will be seeing examples of both of these in just a short while. Let's take a look at adapter view first. So here is a simple application under test. We will use the data adapter sample from our testing samples repository. As you can see, in this application, I have a list view component wherein every row has a text view with a label like item 68, 69 and so on and has a toggle button to the right. When the user clicks on any element in this list, we have a label up top called as clicked on row that is updated. So how do we write a test for this? As we saw earlier, we start with writing our class, annotate it with Android J unit 4. We then launch the activity. In this case, it's a long list activity and I'll show you this in the app in just a minute. But for now, I'm trying to make you understand the common patterns we have for writing an espresso test. So we create our activity scenario rule and specify long list activity. Before we actually write our test, it makes sense to do a negative test first. So we will see, hey, does this view that we are interested in, does it even exist? So we start with trying to find an element whether it's present on the screen. We'll use the with text view matcher and then we'll check that it does not exist in our assertion. Next, we want to try to scroll to our item. Since this is an adapter view, as I mentioned, we will use on data. Also, notice within the on data, I'm making use of a has entry matcher. A has entry matcher is able to find a given entry in a key value sort of data structure, something like a hash map. And in this particular example, the actual adapter viewer is backed by a hash map having key as row text and value as the actual text. We'll see this in a minute. But what I'm trying to tell Espresso is, hey Espresso, can you find me a row element wherein the key is equal to long list activity dot row text and the value has item 99. And finally, once I have that element, I of course try to make sure that this is displayed on the screen. Don't worry, Espresso is going to take care of actually scrolling to that, but make note of we use is completely displayed as an assertion here. What if I want to click on an element in, in a list? Well, you can simply use on child view and give it of course, the locator we are interested in, in this case, it's a row content text view. And finally, we just perform a click action on it. Once we perform a click, as I mentioned, a label gets updated. So we can just verify it with the straightforward on view, giving the ID of selection row view and then trying to match, uh, match it with the given text. And that's about it for the adapter view. Now let's take a live look at the example so that we understand the test a bit better. So let me bring up Android Studio and I'm going to launch data adapter sample. I'm going to fast forward the Gradle sync 
just to save a bit of time. Okay, so our project is completely loaded. Let's just take a look at the app under test very quickly. Okay, so our application is booted and as I showed you, we have a list. Let's just show you the layout very quickly with layout inspector. So as I mentioned, we have a list view at hand, which is inside a linear layout and we have multiple row items. As you can see, this has many items, but at a time we are only loading certain of them. Every row has a text view, which is a label and a button next to it. I can scroll in this and as I scroll, you can see the value of these changes. If I click on one, you can see that this label is updated. Now, what if I want to do the same thing with an espresso test? So let's take a look at that very quickly. Uh, before we begin there, I'll just show you the long list activity. And let me just collapse the emulator and show you the structure. So as I mentioned, we have our on create, which is tasked with basically using an adapter and filling this list with certain data. But this is the important part. As you can see, I have a make item method, which is visible for testing. This is a useful construct so that I can make use of it from espresso tests. I have a hash map and every hash map has a key called as row text wherein I'm generating these label values and then I have a row enabled value mapping to it and this is the actual adapter that is backing uh, this particular list. You can see that there is a long list adapter that extends simple adapter and then basically has code to populate this. It's okay if you don't understand all the details here. Mostly we are going to be interested in writing tests. So let's just take a look at that quickly. And so let's just look for long list activity test. All right. So we start our test with the usual business as I described. We launch our long list activity here. We have our negative test to make sure that when we first launch the application, the item 99 is not visible. And then we have another test that checks for the scrolling part. So as you can see, I have an on row method and I'm given it last item ID. If you go to last item ID, that is basically the item 99. You might be wondering what this on row method is all about. Since we have to repeat the same on data expression and again and again, so we, I just refactored it into a simple method which takes a row text and has the same logic that I described earlier with on data, has entry and checking whether that string is present in the hash map or not. And it returns a data interaction at the end of the day. So I can just go to my first test and as you can see, using this, I'm able to scroll and then check that this is completely displayed. And that's about it. Pretty simple, right? So you can use on data to scroll in an adapter viewer and just go ahead with your tests.